Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking all about transforms in Unity's Entity Component System. Now this is a very important topic because of course this relates to how things are you know, positioned and oriented and scaled within our game world. Um, so we're going to be doing this with you know, pretty much everything that we can you know, visually see within our game. Now I wanted to talk about this because the way transforms work in standard Unity game development um, is quite easy and pretty intuitive and you can pick up on it pretty easily. Now, with Unity's Entity Component System, things are a little bit more complicated. Um, and if you kind of go to the documentation to learn a little bit more about it, you know, you might get kind of overwhelmed. They have like, a, you know, all these like diagrams and um, all these like acronyms that they're using and everything like that. So it can be a little bit overwhelming, but I promise it really is not all that complicated. Um, so today I kind of just wanted to go over, you know, how transforms work in Unity's Entity Component System. And then after that, I'll be showing you how to actually work with these transform components. So we can do some cool things like this sample project that you see playing behind me, where we have these fighters moving around and rotating and doing all sorts of things. Things, um, in relation to this stage while this stage is flying through space you know very similar to final destination from super smash brothers so anyways before we get into all that i'd just like to say if you do find today's video helpful i'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about unity's data oriented technology stack and their entity component system of course if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. All right, so for starters, I just want to briefly touch on how transforms work in traditional Unity programming. So if you're familiar with Unity, you of course know that, you know, every single game object in our game has a transform component. Even if it's just some, you know, whatever manager script, it still has to have a transform component on it, even though it doesn't necessarily um, need to physically exist in our world. Now, the entity component system is a little bit different because entities actually don't have to have any components on them at all. They can be completely empty. Um, and in fact, if we want, we can just store just regular raw data on it. We don't necessarily need um, any transform data if this entity doesn't necessarily need to live anywhere in our world. So that's kind of the first thing to keep in mind with Unity's entity component system is that not every single entity is going to have the transform components that basically um, allow it to live somewhere in our world. Now, if we do want it to live somewhere in our world, the end all be all component of you know where this entity physically exists in our world is called the local to world component. And it is a float four by four matrix. So it's basically a matrix of four by four of all float values. So a total of 16 float values to um, calculate where this entity actually exists in our world. Now this local to world float four by four matrix, basically using that we can calculate the position, rotation, and scale of the entity just using those values. Now it is possible to directly modify the local to world component. Um, and I will be showing you how to do that when we get to the tutorial section of the video. However, to make it a little bit easier, Unity has provided us with a few different components that we can actually modify more directly that will calculate the local to world value. So these are the translation, rotation, and scale components. Now there's actually two scale components and we'll be talking about that in a second. Um, but the translation component basically um, is where it exists as a position in the world, and that's a float three component. And that's is basically the equivalent of a vector three transform dot position like we see in regular Unity. The rotation component is a little bit interesting because it's a, of type quaternion with a lowercase q. Um, so it's different than the capital Q quaternion type in regular Unity. Now, really the easiest way to assign all the necessary components to a particular entity is just by using the conversion workflow. So this is basically where we have a game object set up in our scene, and then we attach the convert to entity script on it. Now, when we do that and we run our game, it's going to um, basically convert the transform component into the local to world component, uh, the translation component, as well as the rotation component. Now, if the scale value is set to one, 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 so that's just regular normal scale, then a scale component is not added to the entity at all. However, if the scale is anything but one, 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 then it's going to add a non-uniform scale component. Um, you know, even if we have values of like three, 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 and it is technically like a uniform scale up, um, it's still going to add a non-uniform scale. That's just kind of how the conversion process works right now. However, like I did mention, there are two scale components. So there is the non-uniform scale component, which I just mentioned. And there's also one just called scale. And this one just takes in a float value. 
Um, and so this is basically for a uniform scale. Now, if we want to use this uniform scale component, we actually have to manually add this through code and I'll be showing you how to do it. It's basically just as easy as adding any standard component to an entity. So anyways, using these translation, rotation and scale components from that, we can basically calculate the um, local to world component. And again, this is kind of the uh, end all be all of where the component exists in our world. Now things start to get a little bit more complicated when we want to introduce parenting of transforms um, within our project. Now parenting is useful for you know doing something like I have in the sample project where we have a platform that's kind of floating through space and we want some things to move around on that platform in relation to the platform. So the way this is actually going to work is basically all the you know kind of fighter objects that I have, they're going to be essentially child objects of the parent and the parent being the actual battle stage that's flying through space. So the way that this works is we first calculate the local to world of the parent entity. So in this case, the battle stage, um, you know, we'll factor in any modifications to translation, rotation, and scale components to get that final local to world components of the parent. Then we can move along to the child. Now the child is set up a little bit unique because now it actually has what's known as a local to parent component. And this is basically uh, very similar to the local to world component in that it is a float four by four matrix. However, instead of telling about um, you know, where this object is and how it's oriented in relation to our game world, it's giving us this information in relation to the parent object. And so with child entities, now when we modify our translation, rotation, and scale components, they're actually going to be modifying the local to parent component. So if we say want to move the translation component to the left two units, then it's actually going to be modifying the local to parent component. So the offset from the parent's origin position is going to be now two more units to the left. Then once we have the local to parent component calculated, we can now take the local to world component from the parent and the local to parent component of the child and combine those two to calculate the local to world of the child. Again, like I said, the local to world is basically the end all be all of where any object exists in our game world. So anyways, I think that's enough of the kind of theory section and I can actually show you how this all looks inside the Unity editor now. And by the way, all the project files and code featured in today's video are available using the links in the description below. All right, so here we are over in Unity. You'll see that I have a Cinemachine track set up and this is basically how we can kind of define um, where we want these uh, battle stage to fly around throughout our world. And then it actually uses just a regular game object with the Cinemachine dolly car to actually follow along this path. And then there's this battle stage follower, which is converted to an entity. And this basically just mirrors the position of the track follower here. So that's just kind of like a, a little bit of a workaround that we have to do. Again, working between uh, traditional Unity and some of the ECS stuff here. Now you see that as a child of the battle stage follower, I have the actual battle stage. Uh, the reason I do this is just basically so I can do a little bit of a rotation offset. So it is kind of oriented towards the camera how I want it to. You'll notice that on this child object, I do not have the convert to entity script on there. Um, and that's basically just the way the game object conversion system works is when we have parent child relationships within our hierarchy here, and just the top level one is being converted to an entity, then everything below it is going to be converted to an entity as well. And it will set up all the parent child relationships as we want them. So to show you how this is set up in code, you'll see that I have a battle staged manage data component. So this manage data component uses a public class rather than a public struct. Um, go check out the video that I did on using UI in Unity ECS to learn a little bit more about managed data components. But basically we need to make it a managed data component if we want a reference to the transform of the track follower. Now you see that this is where we're actually going ahead and moving the stage. So you'll see in our on update function, we're getting a reference to the local to world. And then we're just going to be reading from the battle stage to manage data right here. So you'll see that we'll go ahead and create a new position and rotation variable. And we're just getting these literally from the position and rotation of the regular unity transform on that track follower game object. And then when we set our local to world, we just do local to world value. We'll set this equal to a new float four by four. 
and one of the constructors for the float 4x4, we can just pass in a rotation and position, and then it will calculate um, this 4x4 matrix. So you see if we come over here and enter play mode, and I select this battle stage follower, you see that this local to world is being updated consistently every single frame. Now you'll notice the rotation and translation are not actually updating right now, and that's because we're literally just not updating those components. We're just updating the local to world component, um, and that's really all that matters for getting this to move around within our world. Again, these rotation and translation components are kind of just helpers. Now, if we select our actual battle stage, you'll see that there are a number of more components on here. Uh, so for starters, you'll see that at the top we have a parent. So this is actually the parent entity. Again, this is the child of the battle stage follower. So we just always have that um, basically as a component that we can look at if necessary. You'll notice that the local to parent is not changing at all. And that's because we're not moving in relation to the parent at all. We're basically, you know, having the exact same position and rotation and we're not changing that at all. So the local to parent is not changing at all. Now you'll notice that the local to world is still changing. And that's of course, because we're, you know, flying through space. And then just real quickly, I can kind of show you what things look like when we start to add some of these fighters in. Um, so basically I've created a number of these kind of data components for the different types of movement we want to have. Most of the times they're just going to have a magnitude and frequency. However, for the movement data, we also have the origin position as well. Now, if we're to look at say the movement system, you'll see that um, we're basically just kind of calculating a new position just using a, a new float three here. Um, and we're calculating this using some sines and cosines. So then you'll see that I'm just setting that directly to the translation.value component here. So now if we look in the inspector on that fighter one entity, you'll see that the translation value is being updated every single frame just like we were doing right through code you'll notice that the local to parent is now being updated every single frame as well and that's because we are actually now moving around this entity in space in relation to the parent and then of course because it is you know moving around within our world um, not only on the stage but you know with the stage moving around the local to world is going to continue to update every single frame. Very similar with rotation, we can just set rotation.value here, and then I'm using the quaternion.euler function to just go ahead um, and create this little effect where the fighter kind of moves back and forth. Again, looking at the inspector here, you'll see that the translation is not changing at all. However, the rotation is changing every single frame, um, which in turn is still going to update the local to parent every single frame. Now for uniform scale, this one is slightly different because in the on start running, we actually have to add a new scale component. If you remember when I said earlier in the video, just the standard game object conversion is not going to add a regular scale component. It will only add a non-uniform scale component if the scale is anything other than one, one, one. So in this case, we first have to manually add a scale component. And then in our on update function, we can just go ahead and set scale.value. And then we're basically, again, just kind of doing a math.sign so it can kind of go uh, larger and smaller. So you'll see that this is basically a sphere that's uniformly scaling in all directions, just larger and smaller. And then you'll see we can actually inspect this scale value and it is going larger and smaller. And so here's the non-uniform scale. You'll see that we're basically just setting the scale.value to a new float three because that's what the non-uniform scale uses. And we're just setting the scale in the Y direction here. So this one can just go kind of taller and shorter here. So of course, if we inspect it, you'll just see a non-uniform scale component with a value changing in the Y direction. And then finally, here's the move rotate system. So this is basically going to move and rotate the target entity see that I have a reference to the local to parent right here. You'll see that I'll create a variable for position and rotation. And very similar to when we're directly setting the local to world, we can just do a local to parent dot value. We'll set this equal to a new float four by four matrix. We can just pass in the rotation and position to calculate that. So finally, we'll go ahead and enable the final fighter and you'll see that it is now kind of moving back and forth as well as changing its rotation side to side. Again, the rotation and translation values are not changing because we're not modifying those directly. However, we are directly modifying the local to parent. So you'll see that this is updating every single frame as is the local to world. So anyways, that's an overview of how transforms work in Unity's entity component system. Really do hope you found this video uh, helpful and educational and hopefully it kind of, you know, demystified the concepts of transforms and kind of made you understand how they work a little bit better. Once again, if you did enjoy today's video and you learned something, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack. 
course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev Discord. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.